morning. We do have some breaking news on Hurricane Ida. The 1 a.m. update is in, and really, again, not a surprise. It is a major hurricane. This is the second major hurricane of the Atlantic season with winds now of 115 miles an hour. The pressure has been rapidly dropping. It's now down to 955, so it is rapidly intensifying. And based on satellite imagery, it is just an impressive-looking storm with those thunderstorm cloud tops that are the more intense in the upper parts of the atmosphere now completely surrounding the center of the storm. This is a, an intense storm. This is not a surprise. This is what we were expecting. It will then ramp up to a four as we get into the maybe before sunrise. So we've got the uh, four o'clock advisory that'll come in and then the seven o'clock advisory and then seven o'clock advisory it's expected to be a four would not be a surprise and even as of the one o'clock advisory we see that this is already uh, a, a four but i do want to go and show what the center line still looks like with the storm itself it is following now basically right along where the hurricane center is saying it's actually it had been trending a little bit more west of that center line as of uh, a couple of hours ago so it is trending and following basically what the official forecast is from the national hurricane center but earlier it was actually trending a little bit more to the west will that matter in the forecast probably not dramatically and certainly not for the coast maybe more for the city as again we are right on that cusp of either seeing hurricane force or tropical storm force at the moment just based on the trajectory of the storm it does look like we would see the hurricane force winds here in the city of new orleans and again the intensity of the storm continues to build as it has been undergoing that rapid intensification. So I wanted to be able to zoom in here on the forecasted track. Again, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, not too far, almost due south of the mouth of the river. So in the next six hours, we should see the center of the storm due south of the mouth of the river. And again, that would take that strong wind field right near and across parts of Lower Plaquemines Parish that would continue across Lower Jefferson. So then Grand Isle, then you're talking Lafouche and Port Fouchon, and then Coquitry as you get into Southern Terrebonne Parish, then continuing up in a direction, taking it over the river parishes, and then the center of which over Baton Rouge. But as we have said, this is certainly taking the center of the storm much, much closer to the city of New Orleans, and there is a greater chance of seeing the strong, sustained winds of hurricane force in the city of New Orleans. Rainfall will start moving through over the next few hours. It's likely to be fairly light. We'll see some pockets of heavier rainfall. The heaviest of the rain will start moving in through the morning into the afternoon, continuing into the overnight period, and then by Monday, probably midday and into the afternoon. Monday is when we will see improving conditions. So yes, it is moving quickly, but it will be moving in a way that will keep us under the heavy rainfall through the duration of Sunday and into early Monday. So the question of when do we start to see improving conditions, it probably won't be until a little bit later on in the afternoon and evening of Monday as the winds will start picking up throughout the night tonight. And as far as those hurricane force winds, looking more and more likely that they will spread across the city. Now, the big question then comes in, how large is this wind field and how large is the eye wall as it does push on shore? Clearly, we're going to see the strongest winds of at the point, at, again, right now, looking at 130 mile an hour at landfall. That's going to be felt in Lower Plaquemines, Jefferson Parish, Lower Jefferson. And so now Grand Dial might even see that across uh, uh, um, the kind of the Jean Lafitte and then Port Fouchon as well as Cocodry as that eye wall passes over the near the city, but certainly over the river parishes and up in the direction of Baton Rouge. And again, it could be very close that we even see some of those major winds associated with the storm. That's in kind of excess of 110 plus miles an hour. Certainly possibility of wind gusts up to 110 miles an hour, even in the city. Let's look at the percentages. Again, we were talking about these had increased from the earlier models, and it's now at a 57% chance of or probability of seeing hurricane force winds in the city of New Orleans. So it is still not a guarantee, but their chances have certainly increased over the last several model runs and over the last several four.
forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Winds have been increasing, and now we're looking at winds sustained at the mouth of the river at her, or excuse me, at Tropical Storm Fort. So you've got 45 mile an hour winds at Main Pass, right around Southwest Pass, gusting up to 52 miles an hour. And just to the east of that, winds sustained at 46 miles an hour, gusting up to 55. So the Tropical Storm Force winds have now reached southeast Louisiana. So down along the mouth of the river, we are looking at tropical storm force winds. And again, because of the fast motion of this storm, we should see this uh, moving inland very quickly as with regards to the winds and the highest rainfall. The tornado risk is still going to be there as we continue throughout the day today. And even into Monday, that risk will still be there. Although the risk, this really is for the, uh, since we've now changed days, this risk is now looking at Monday, which is going to be a little bit greater as you move off to our uh, east. So even folks that uh, retreated off to the east to evacuate, such as my family, they will still have a risk as you get more into uh, uh, Florida, a risk of some of the tornadic storms just because that at point uh, that that point on Monday, we'll begin to see some of those heavy rain bands moving in more of an easterly and northeasterly direction as the center of circulation starts to push that way as well. Storm surge potential, again, I don't think we're going to see, oh, we are not going to see, I can almost guarantee any changes as far as the impacts go as the storm makes landfall. The surge pushing into Lake Pontchartrain, that's going to prevent any water from the rivers as we have the heavy rainfall. That's going to prevent any of that water from then draining into the lake and actually start backing up the rivers, which could cause some fairly decent and significant flooding across some of the rivers. Generally, not for Washington Parish. We're looking at more Southern Tangerhope Parish and St. Tammany Parish for any of that potential river flooding. Rainfall totals have been very difficult to forecast because it really depends upon where exactly some of those feeder bands actually set up. A rough estimate is about 7 to 10 inches of rainfall, but you are going to find a swath of about 10 to 15 inches, especially right near and just to the east of the center of the circulation of the storm. With the water temperatures, plenty warm to continue that strengthening, and that is one of the big reasons why we've seen that rapid intensification really all day Saturday and now continuing into early Sunday. Sunday. So the tropical uh, storm impacts, really we could say they have begun as we're already starting to see that near the mouth of the river with sustained tropical storm force winds. No dramatic changes are expected in the forecast. There may be a little jog one way or another, but to see any dramatic changes, that's just not going to happen. So the landfall is a major hurricane expected a little bit later on this morning. As a matter of fact, in about 12 hours exactly from now, the damage unfortunately is going to be extensive and widespread really across a good portion of of our viewing area. I don't really think there's going to be any area that goes completely unscathed. Obviously, the damage is going to be far greater as you get closer to where the storm initially makes landfall and then where the center of that circulation with the strongest winds starts to cut a path uh, kind of from the river par or from the uh, bayou parishes up toward the river parishes, and that could include parts of the metro area and then up toward Baton Rouge. All right, so we are now looking at a Category 3 storm. You said those winds at 115 miles per hour. Chris, this thing seems to be progressing as you guys are forecasting. This is no surprise, right? It's not. It's it's one of those eye-opening when you see that now the winds are at 115. You've seen how far that the pressure has dropped. But again, this was all expected. We were anticipating that it would become a major hurricane by some point early this morning. And again, would not be surprised because of the, the rate at which the pressure has been dropping. It wouldn't be a big surprise to see this already jump up to maybe a four at the four o'clock advisory. At the moment, the forecast is calling for it to become a four at the 7 a.m. advisory. So either in the next three hours or six hours, it'll be a category four storm. And we're expecting a category four storm to make landfall in about 12 hours from now. And are people on the coast are already seeing impacts right now, you, you would imagine? Yeah, well, the, the impacts, at least in terms of the tropical storm force, we were just looking at some of the buoys right at the mouth of the river, and they are looking at winds sustained over tropical storm force. So the tropical storm force winds have now made their way into southeast Louisiana. They had been generally staying offshore, but they have now made their way onshore. And you can even see in the last few images here of radar, we're starting to get some of those little feeder bands, not as heavy on the more
more northern end of the storm, but certainly some of those more tropical feeder bands beginning to move across the mouth of the river. And what we've been watching here, of course, throughout the storm is people trying to evacuate. We need to get an update on our traffic cameras, but the last look that we took were people stuck at the Louisiana-Texas line just stuck on the interstate. Is that area going to see impacts from the storm, or are those people in a safe zone? You know, honestly, as you go farther to the west, you're, you're probably okay, especially for areas if they are kind of stuck uh, right in through here, west of Lafayette. Uh, you're probably okay. It's not as though you're now stuck in, in, in traffic and you're looking at an incoming hurricane. Uh, it's going to certainly move in that general direction, but then it's going to start turning really by the time it gets toward Baton Rouge. So the center of it is actually not going to make it to Lafayette. I was kind of drawing a line like that. It's going to start turning by the point of around Baton Rouge. So it's going to stay away from West Louisiana. So if they are stuck in traffic, it's unfortunate, but they're also not looking at a storm moving over them either. All right. But when we're looking at the specific track, how wide is this?